Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we're working on a walk-in refrigerator and doing a refrigerant leak repair. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. This is a split system. This is a water cold system. As you can see, we have our water cold condenser back there. And during my last visit, I found a suction service valve leaking. Here is the new suction service valve. This is a special rotor lock connection for the compressor. And what's interesting is that this is a fully steel body. So that means we're gonna be connecting copper with steel. So we're gonna be replacing this valve and at the same time, every time we open up a system, due to moisture, we're gonna be replacing this filter dryer. Let's get the gauges on the system and begin by recovering the refrigerant. We're now recovering the refrigerant. The refrigerant is fully out of the system. From here, I'm gonna start taking apart what I need to. Suction service valve here, I'm gonna cut that out of the way. And this filter dryer has a flare connection, another chance of leakage. So I'm gonna cut this out of the way and repipe it so we can sweat the connections. Sometimes I just unsweat it depending on the piping, but here I can see I have slack, so I'm just gonna cut this out of the way. And then since I have that slack, I'm just gonna push down on this piping so I can reach that one. And then for this one, I have a piece of pipe with coupling, so we could just rebuild this whole thing. So, start by cutting this all out. This side is now cut, and then I would have to remove this little flare nut. This is for the low pressure control. Remove this piece with the swivel T, and just loosen up that nut. And this connection is off. And then from here, I'm just gonna cut this out of the way and rebuild it. So, let's chop it up. Pressure control out of the way. Let's see if this reach. Okay. Okay. That is now out. And that could hang. Alright. Alright. And now this is out of the way too. Pay attention to the arrow. You want to replace the new filter dryer the same way. So this is the pipe I prepped for our filter dryer. As you can see on the end, we sanded everything down. So all the connections where we made cuts, we're gonna sand it down. So we're gonna sand down here, here, and there, and just follow along. Sand down the outside of all our pipes and the inside of all our fittings. All right, all right. That is a beautiful thing. The only thing is on this one, I don't have a sight glass, but that is no big deal. There is a little gasket inside here. So I just dry fitted it from here. Then I'm gonna loosen it up and braise it loose so we don't melt that gasket. And yeah, turn off the smoke alarm and hit this thing. Today I'll be using acetylene. Here's my tank, here's my torch. So I propped up the valve with an adjustable wrench. I have everything lined up right here with a Sharpie. And this is a special brazing rod. This is a flux coated brazing rod and it's 56% silver. And that's what you need to bond copper with steel. This is my first time using this, so let's see what happens. Pretty good. 
and from here we gotta brace this side. For here I'll be using a standard brazing rod and this contains 15% silver. Here I take a mirror and visually inspect all around each joint. Make sure I'm good on that end. And then from there, I'm gonna pressurize the system with nitrogen and see what's going on. All right. Here, let's start building this back together. The old gasket looks pretty good. It's kind of embedded in there, so I'm gonna try it see what happens it didn't leak from there on the old one so let's see what happens it was leaking from the stem I'm gonna try to leave a clip side so let's lock this down connect this back and pressurize everything's looking good and one thing I always do is every time I have the system open, I always replace the pins. From here, we're gonna pressurize the system with nitro and check for any leaks using micro leak detector. No leaks. From here, you can dump the nitro. Just dump the nitrogen, and from here, we are going to pull a vacuum. I do have a micron gauge connected. While the system is pulling, I hate seeing those wires like that. I'm gonna secure them and find a cover. All right, that looks so much better. It's definitely the little things. All right, so from here, I'm gonna close our gauges, turn off our pump, make sure everything holds, and if everything's good, we're ready for refrigerant. All right, we are now ready for refrigerant. Got my probes connected here, and I have these digital temperature clamps here. So we're gonna charge the system using superheat and subcooling. Here's the refrigerant. Gages are closed. Let's open this. Flip it to charge liquid. Now I need a vent. Purge. All right. Get the app open, charges baby up. Our system is off. I charge to the high side. Let's bring those temperatures up. Excuse me, those pressures up. Then we're gonna start it. The only thing I did really notice is that, you know, since this is a water cooled system, the water temperature is gonna play a role with our head pressure. And this water is very cold right now. It's about 20 degrees outside. This water is very cold. So, let's see how it goes. I did adjust this to raise the pressure up as much as I can as a water regulating valve. As you can see, the spring is down. I did make a video on how to adjust that. I will link that. So, 
let some refrigerant come in then we're gonna start it up and we're gonna go with superheat and subcooling this is an R12 compressor so I'm putting in refrigerant 134A it's looking pretty good we have a about a 12 degree superheat and the soap cooling is low superheat looks good sub cooling is a bit low but listen I got a 35 degree suction line this box is gonna come down in no time oh wow we are just at about 35 degrees in here so you want this to cycle between 35 and 40 degrees and this is looking great once again, that condenser water is very cold from the cooling tower, but with that adjustment, this should do. We've got 11.3 superheat, 4.8 subcooling. Subcooling is a bit low, but it's all right, makes sense. Got good temperatures, got decent pressures. I might tweak it around a little bit, but man, these tools are a lifesaver. So pretty much, that was it. That looks beautiful if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe because i come out with new videos every week and i'll catch you all next time